So I suppose the next question for us is, so what, what's it really like? What, what's, what's really involved in terms of getting involved with Fulbright, doing some research, putting together an application? What impact will it have on you and your career? So we've invited each of our four, five scholars um, to talk about their experiences. So they each have um, 15 minutes <coughs> each to do that, and we'll have some questions at the end. Um, first up, we have Jimmy O'Brien Moran, who is a, a keen Illin Pike player, and he also lectures here in a part-time basis in the Department of Creating, uh, Creative and Performing Arts. He received his um, Fulbright Scholarship in 2007-08, um, and he studied at Boston College there during his scholarship. Um, and I suppose I uh, just want to acknowledge Jimmy's role in Fulbright to date, and he's recently been nominated um, President of the Fulbright Alumni Association, so I'm sure he'll be very successful in, the, in that role, and he's been very much involved in the Alumni Association over the last few years anyway. So with that... Jimmy. Thank you very much. I normally sit behind the protective cover of a, a set of pipes, so I'm uh, feeling a little bit naked here. Uh, I was awarded the, the Fulbright in 2007 and went over to Boston College in 2008. Uh, I confess that my awareness of Fulbright um, before that had really been uh, confined to a passing reference in the Paul song, Simon song, You Can Call Me Al, where he says aren't you the woman that was recently given a Fulbright? Mm -hmm. But in fact, I suppose I did have a, a, another connection because a famous uh, folk collector, Jean Ritchie, uh, from Kentucky, came to uh, Britain and Ireland in the 50s to collect uh, folk songs that she had actually grown up with in the American tradition. So there was that, I suppose, that awareness as well. Um, my... Um, my Award was by was um, I think partly financed by Culture Ireland and by Fulbright here, and uh, Culture Ireland promotes Irish arts worldwide. Part of the Department of uh, uh, Arts, Heart, Culture, and the Gaeltacht, or whatever name they give themselves at the moment, it seems to be a continuing change. Uh, and Michal O'Sullivan had been the chair of that organisation. Uh, since 2005, and he set up two uh, Fulbright Award schemes for uh, New York University, NYU, and for Boston College, and he had already been involved with Boston College. Uh, he set up an, a music archive, an Irish music archive there, and he was also very friendly with uh, Mick Maloney, who was a professor down in NYU. So um, a friend of mine, for no reason, uh, I don't mean friend for no reason, I mean for no reason, uh, for his own, on his own merits, uh, no connection to me, uh, he got the first uh, award which was to NYU and I got the one on the following year which was 2007 and 8 and I went to Boston College. The scholarship uh, was advertised publicly and I applied for it and so the host institution had already been <coughs> accepted. My own PhD research had brought me to Boston uh, a number of times uh, because the Boston Public Library has uh, select, uh, collections of Irish music manuscripts from the 19th century, which was my area of, of specialization. Um, as the scholarship was uh, to include lecturing and research, I thought that this particular project of, of uh, the Henry Hudson manuscripts uh, were the ones I wanted to work on. So I arrived in Boston. I, I'm not sure where do I get my, uh, my, my PowerPoint here. A technical Luddite, I'm afraid. So just press this down arrow. Great. Yep. So look at that. So I arrived in Boston in January uh, 2008, and there was an Irish music festival going on in Cambridge. I had one or two friends there and ended up uh, actually meeting a few people uh, at that that I had already known. So that was kind of a nice little welcome. Uh, I have to say, I couldn't believe how lonely I became there uh, very early on. So there is actually a, a kind of a culture shock and a, a loneliness that's attached to your, 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 your program because you are kind of on your own. But that's not to say that I didn't get a great welcome. So my, coast, my host uh, college, BC, had arranged accommodation for me. Not this one, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I hasten to add. But it was a fabulous accommodation. And uh, it was only about 10 or 15 minutes from the college. Now, I had mo memorized the Google map to get me there. And uh, so on the first Monday, I tramped my way out of the 
apartment and found Boston was completely covered in snow. And so the Google map was a little bit useless, but didn't have any snow on the, on the map. So anyway, I, I, of course, terrified that I might not have the right clothing and what kind of, I mean, the last time I'd seen this amount of snow was a ski holiday and, and it's a different, kind of a, a different kind of cold. But anyway, uh, I set off and got to the, the gates of, of Boston College and asked for directions and was pointed to this beautiful building, which is Connolly House, which is the centre for the Irish uh, music programme, for Irish studies programme. And uh, here's another picture from the front and you can see it's just absolutely gorgeous. So it was a very nice start. Anyway, I later met, it turned out, in fact, there was a, a, um, the, the, the college being shut for the day because of the snow. So I had to wait around, and eventually I, I met the executive director, <coughs> director uh, Thomas Hashi, who took me into his office and explained the workings of, of the centre and, in fact, took care of a lot of details that I needed, you know, for various uh, cards and things that I needed there. And also told me I was going to share uh, an office with Seamus Connolly, who's a actually renowned fiddle player. And uh, Seamus, in fact, uh, used to run a Gaelic Roots Festival at BC, which was uh, quite, quite well known in, in traditional circles, circles. And last year, he was the recipient of the National Heritage Fellowship by the National Endowment of the Arts, which is one of the highest awards you can get in the arts in the US. Anyway, my award had the grand title of Fulbright Visiting Professor. Uh, but it was explained to me that the teaching hours were largely assigned already to the music teacher, so that I was actually going to, I was expected to give a number of public lectures, and I was uh, also to perform at several concerts. But as it happened, I frequently participated in the music classes with uh, music professor Anne Spinney. She was a Harvard graduate, and she was very welcoming, and we had some uh, great exchanges. Um, part of my... Um, uh, loneliness. I had a friend living in uh, upstate New York, a lovely village called, I recommend that you visit it, called Cold Spring. Uh, he later became the mayor of Cold Spring. I think it has about 200 votes, so maybe it wasn't such a big deal, but it was a fabulous, it's a fabulous village. So I contacted him and he said, come down, we're having a Burns night. It was end of, end of January. So instantly I felt kind of welcomed and back on home patch, so it kept the, the, the loneliness at bay. Much of my time uh, was spent in the McKim building of the Boston Public Library, which is a beautiful old building built in uh, 1895, and houses a lot, lot of the research material and rare books. And due to the, its age, they don't allow you to plug into their power, which was kind of unfortunate. And this was 2008, so the duration of your batteries wasn't quite as long as it is today. But I did get two backup batteries, and I used to charge up overnight and I'd spend most of the day uh, in the McKim, and they often had uh, exhibitions and things which were a welcome distraction. I remember Yusef Karsh, the Canadian photographer, worth looking up if you don't know him. Um, so the manuscripts I was studying were originally a collection of seven volumes uh, of Irish music collected between 1814 and 1856. And you can see a page from, from, in fact, the Boston Public Library one. And it's signed on the on the bottom, it's not signed actually that one, but anyway, Henry Hudson was the man in question and uh, originally there were seven volumes and the collection was uh, broken up and uh, sold off and uh, so Boston Public Library bought five of them and so that's why I was kind of focusing there but one of them is in the National Library here in Ireland and one was bought by Captain Francis O'Neill who was Chief of Police of the Chicago Police Force in 1904. And uh, so he donated all his Hibernicana, as he called it, his whole collection, to Notre Dame University, which meant that I had to go to Notre Dame. So uh, here's actually the, the volume in Notre Dame, and uh, it says Library of Captain Francis O'Neill, Chicago. And then inside you can see H. Hudson, 24 St. Stephen's Green. I won't give you too much, I won't give you any detail about Henry, but you can probably look him up online if you're interested. Uh, uh, I actually contacted another Fulbrighter from my year uh, who was down in, in Notre Dame, uh, Brianna Nick Yermida, and uh, she's in the Department of Irish Language and so on. So I arranged to go down there, and they were extremely helpful and gave me, in fact, a copy, a photocopy of this, which actually solved a lot of difficulties for me that I could go in and study it. Um, and there was even a session of music down in South Bend, Indiana, which I, I 
participated in. Among my activities on campus were workshops with students who were interested in Irish music. They were informal in they were of an informal nature and as such very conducive to Irish music. Uh, I made good use of the libraries at BC uh, as there are to my surprise many rare uh, books actually up on the shelves. I was quite amazed. Uh, some very, very old books. But they also have uh, the Burns Library, which is um, one of the largest archives of Irish music uh, in, in the US. And I developed a very good relationship with the librarian there, Elizabeth Sweeney, and she still sends me emails of, of things that are happening. Can't go, but I, I, like, to, I like to keep in touch. Uh, another activity I participated in uh, was um, a James Joyce group of reading group entitled Raiden the Wake. And uh, it was run by uh, a colourful Professor Joseph Nugent, who is originally from Mullingar, but teaches in, in, in Boston College. And in fact, talk about making friends and connections, Joe came to dinner last night. So uh, that, that, all of that sort of continues on. Um, he also runs uh, courses for American students in Dublin, so I, I occasionally um, give a lecture for, on his courses in Dublin. Um, while in Boston, I received many uh, invitations to teach and perform in different locations around the US. I didn't have to travel far to perform at the State House in Boston for St. Patrick's Day, uh, and I performed uh, on the radio program. Uh, Brian O'Donovan, whose daughter Aoife O'Donovan sings with uh, Crooked Still, I don't know if you've come across that, but Brian is a stalwart of Boston Radio, and uh, I, I, I was there, and John Spillane is there someplace too. Um, as I said, I went down to Cold Spring a number of times. I was teaching and performing there. I also received a, a, an invitation to go to Seattle. And uh, my, uh, the guy that I, I, I knew that was inviting me uh, was kind of amazed that I was so enthusiastic to go to Seattle for a weekend. But that's because, of course, I didn't realize it was further away than Dublin. <laughs> uh, and there's only an hour, it's about three hours difference and about 10 hours of my life. Uh, but. Uh, Interesting, and uh, you can see the Gehrig building and, and, uh, and the Seattle Space Needle. Um, so, also uh, an interesting one was uh, I met F. Scott Fitzgerald, as you can see there. We had a, a, a piping tin hole in, in, in Minneapolis. So, I also went down to the uh, City University of New York to meet up with Colleen and uh, Minister uh, Eamon O'Keeve and uh, met, met, there was an FLTA there, I can't remember her name, uh, but we had a very interesting uh, meeting. And of course, do I have the photograph? I don't, didn't upload. Uh, I had to go to Fenway Park for the cultural experience of watching the Red Sox. A Piper friend, oh my God, Piper <laughs> friend of mine uh, who works at the bookshop in, in BC. I was amazed, I went in to buy some books and he says, Jimmy, and we became great buddies. And again, he comes over to Ireland every year and, and I meet him, but uh, he got a couple of tickets to the Red Sox. He's a huge Red Sox fan. So when my wife was over visiting, we went to a Red Sox game and we did all the stuff that you do. And so I rec recommend attending a sports uh, event in the US if you get over there, because while it's not quite the Aviva or Croke Park uh, because of vested interests, it's still quite the experience. So I have to say my experience in the US was very interesting. Every university is a little different, and it was very valuable, I thought, to actually work in the environment in Boston College. Lots of things that I sort of picked up there that I've tried to incorporate in, in my own teaching. Uh, it is a very personal program. Uh, you get a lot of contact with the Fulbright Commission, who guide you and advise you and generally ease your way into that experience. Uh, depending on your type of award, you get invited to various weekends where you explore American life and culture. I think it's a very valuable program, both academically, culturally, and indeed socially. It will change your view of the US in a good way, and it probably will uh, change your view of Ireland. So I'd like to thank Fulbright for actually uh, this wonderful opportunity. I'd also like to thank Colleen for uh, all her great work during the years, and very sorry to see her go. She was a very good friend to Fulbright Alumni Association, uh, which our motto is, um, continuing your Fulbright experience. But, uh, and thank you for all the organizers today. So uh, thank you very much.